All right, so this question is a bit difficult. The moment I draw the stairs, all I really need to do is to find how many distinct ways do I actually have to get to the top. So the solution is as follows. All I really need to know is how many distinct ways I have to get to these in order for me to find Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about problem 70, climbing stairs. This problem was given by Google in a coding interview and today we're going to be trying to figure out the solution. Now before we start, I want to keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind that the idea here is rather difficult. The solution code wise is going to be eight lines of code, so nothing difficult there, but the whole idea is going to take you probably one or two reads and one or two re-watching the videos so you can actually take an understanding of that. As I said, it's a bit difficult. Don't get discouraged. You're going to understand it. I'm going to do my best to explain it. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Let's read the problem and figure out a solution. You are climbing a staircase. It takes you n steps to reach to the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. And how many distinct ways can you climb at the top? Now, down here you can see examples. I do want to go through the examples because, as I said, this is a bit more... Uh, for me, I think it, the, the idea is a bit difficult. And uh, when you ever have difficult ideas or something is unclear, always write them down. There's nothing wrong for you to actually write and draw some stuff, right? Because you are thinking and that is going to show the interviewer that you actually can an algorithm right? Shred it into little pieces. Just think about it. And that's valuable, of course. Now, let's go with N2. This means that we are going to have two stairs. I'm going to draw them like that. Okay, can I actually draw them like that? Is that going to be better looking? No, it's not. Harry Potter lives here, by the way. So let's go two, one, and zero. Now, we have two distinct ways to actually climb two stairs. How is that so? Well, I can go one step here and then one step that's going to be bringing me to the top. Also, what I can do is just straight go with two steps. Think about this as the people in the subway, somebody is going one step at a time and the other people with longer feet, they actually go with two steps at a time. I, for example, go like, like that, right? Two steps at a time. Good, so that's the two. Let's write the three. If I have three, two, one, zero, the example is saying that we're going to have three unique ways. Of course, the first one is always going to be one step at a time until we go to the top. The second here is going to be one step that's going to bring me to stair number one, and then two steps that's going to be bringing me to stair number three, the top. And of course, the other thing that I can do is from zero, I can say, okay, two steps that are going to bring me to stair number two, and then one step that's going to be bringing me to stair number three. Great. But it's still pretty horrible because I do not know what to write. I do not know what, what to use. Should I use a hash map, a hash set? What is, what is the thinking here? Now, since I'm confused and I do not know what to do, right, I'm going to go down and I'm going to be asking the interviewer, all right, can you give me some related topics? What am I looking at? He's going to give you a memorization and dynamic programming code. So he's going to give you a hint. Now I'm going to read the hint. Actually, let's read the hint. To reach end step, what could you have been your previous steps? Think about the step sizes. Well, that's not a very poor hint, but still rather shit. Now, memorization is something interesting. Memorization means that whenever, and dynamic programming, uh, it means that whenever I actually start coding, right? So, so here, think about Fibonacci, if you have not seen it, right? Think about that. And if you have not seen it, I'm going to make a video about it. So stay tuned. Now, Fibonacci can actually be solved when you actually keep in mind, what have you done before? Memorization means the following. Now, I am going to calculate the steps. Let's say three, four, two, one. I'm going to calculate the steps from here, down here, right? And let's say that I know that here I need two steps or I have two distinguished ways. The moment I get here, right? The moment I actually go to two, 
I already have this stored somewhere in memory and I can just take it. So that means memorization. Dynamic programming means that with the flow with the program, that's why it's called dynamic, I am going to calculate values that I'm going to use, right? A very simple trick, a very simple trick is timer. If you're creating a game or something like that, I am calling time dot, let's say timer, right? And this timer goes and it's synced with the operation operating system on your time over here and it's always giving you a time. Now this is a dynamic value, right? It's always changing. It is always changing runtime. Good. Now now we know what memorization is in dynamic programming, but still I have no idea how to approach this problem. The first thing that I approach that I do with problems like these is the following. Now I approach them with the theory. I'm writing the things that I understand and the things that I don't. Now the things that I do understand is that if I have two stairs I have distinguished ways to get to the top two. If I have three stairs, I have distinguished ways to go to the top three. Now, so far, it seems that if I have four stairs, I'm going to have four distinguished ways. But this here is not enough, right? Not enough for me to actually create a theory. So I need to at least get something else here to formulate the theory and then code it. So for now, for now, I don't have anything. My theory is that here in four stairs, I'm going to have four distinguished ways. And this here is my theory. I need to say to myself, all right, this is true or this is not true and find another way. It's always nice to switch up the solutions a bit. Now, if you have went from left to right, try to go from right to left. You might get another idea. Now, my idea here is that if I have four, three, two, and one, I'm going to do the following. Let's say that I want to start from the top. I'm not going to start from the bottom and calculate my ways, even though I can do that, even though I can do that because with four, it's still not, 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 not too much numbers. You can keep them as a track and it's enough to formulate the theory, but I'm going to start from the top. The question here I'm, that I'm going to ask myself is how many distinguished ways do I have to be on the top when I'm in the top? It's obviously one, do not move, right? Don't do anything, don't take any steps. Now let's go further left because as I said, this is not enough to formulate the theory. I'm gonna go to three and I'm gonna ask myself again, how many distinct ways do I have from three to go to the four, taking into consideration that I can provide myself with one or two steps at a time. Now I can have one step and go to four or I can have two steps and go out of bounds, which is not allowed meaning that I have only one distinguished way here. So from three, the only way that I can get to four is taking one step, right, and go to the top. Good, still not enough. Let's go with two. How many distinct ways do I have to go to two? Well, I have one way. I can just say, all right, two steps and I'm gonna go to the top, right? So this is my way, one way. But I have something else. I can go to three, right? I can go to three and then three knows how many ways do I have. So here it's very interesting. I do have two ways. I do have two ways, but you, you need to think about the following. In three, since I store in memory, the fact that I have one distinguished way to go to the top. If I manage to get to three, right? If I manage to get to three, it means that three can actually take over. Three can now say, okay, you needed two distinguished ways to get to three, but, but, I need one distinguished way to get to four. So in reality, I'm going to have three distinguished ways, right? Three knows. That's why we call memorization because we store the, these values. So the same we're gonna do with two. Two has two distinguished ways to go to four. Let's go with one. Now one is going to be equal to how much? Well, the first one is me going to two, which is two distinguished ways. And the second one is me going to three because these are the one and the two steps that I'm going to take and three has one. So obviously I'm going to say that I have three distinguished ways here. And here is the theory. Now you can see that this count is equal to the calculation, the summation of these. And this thing over here is equal to the summation of these. And the answer should be the summation of these. The answer should be five. This is what my theory is actually currently. In order for me to check the theory, I'm gonna go to the console and I'm gonna say, all right, whatever 
the number is, just return the number five. And I'm going to, oops, actually, yeah, that, the same thing, but I need to do it here, right? Whatever number I get here in N, just return five. And I'm gonna provide the number four. Let's run the code and see if this is going to get accepted and if this is actually valid. And you can see it is. So what I know now is that my theory is actually right. Now, since this is getting very long, I'm gonna write stairs and I'm gonna write distinguished ways over here. What I do know is that if in two stairs I have two distinguished ways, in three stairs I have three distinguished ways, in four stairs I have five distinguished ways. And here is the theory, you can actually see it. Five is equal to the summation of the previous two. That's what I'm gonna code and that's what I'm gonna see. Good. Now it's time for coding since we have done the explanation of the theory part. Always formulate your own theories. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create an integer array that's gonna be called data. And it's not created like that, it's created like this. Come on, I cannot type. And this is gonna be equal to a new int with the length of n plus one. Now I'm saying n plus one because whenever we're doing a for loop, I'm starting from zero and I'm going to five, right? Uh, but here, if I have five, I'm gonna go from zero to four because four from zero to four included are five numbers. And this is something that you are already familiar with probably. Data one is gonna be equal to one, data, data zero and data one is also going to be equal to one. Why is that? Well, because we know that to step one, right? We need one step because that's the start and the same with zero because this is the bottom over here. Now, I'm gonna write a for loop and I'm gonna say for index equal to index is less or equal than n. This is why we have created this data over here with n plus one, because here we're saying less or equal. I'm gonna say index plus plus. As I said, the only thing that we need to do is to keep the previous two. So data of the current index is gonna be equal of data index minus one plus data of index minus two. That's pretty much it. Now, just fairly quickly, I am going to return data of the number provided. And that's pretty much it. So let's actually submit. As I said, I did record this the first time. The audio was trashy. I hope this one is better. And you can see it's actually doing rather quickly. Now, the final part that I want to explain is this thing over here. Now you can see that in data index two, so stairs, again, I'm gonna write in two, I'm gonna have the previous two, which are gonna be zero and one, and when I sum them up, I'm gonna get two, right? And this is why this is actually working. We're just formulating the theory. We're always getting the two previous. So here we're gonna say two, two plus one. Here we're going to say three plus two because of the previous two, as we already saw. And the final part that we need to be talking about, which I seem to be forgetting is space and time complexity. All right, so here space is going to be linear. It's going to be linear because here we are allocating this array over here. Sorry about that, it's rather ugly. But you, you can see that if we have, uh, let's say number 20, I'm gonna be allocating 20 multiplied by four. I'm gonna be allocating 80 bytes for this array of integers. So the more of a number I get here, the more space I'm gonna allocate. So that's why it's called linear. Here time, I'm going one only for loop and I'm going from two to n, which is obviously going to be linear. And that's pretty much it. The, as I said, if you do not understand that, don't feel discouraged, just watch the theory again. It's a bit more difficult question. If you have any questions, leave them down below and thank you for watching. Bye.